Hey, it's Sarah from Birds of a Feather, and this week we're doing a table collaboration with Rachel from Tea and Forget Me Not. Hi, I'm Rachel, and I'm really excited to be doing a collaboration on two different tables with Sarah this week. So after you finish her video, please head over to mine at Tea and Forget Me Not and take a look. See you over there. Bye. So these are the colors I'm going to be using. I'm going to start with a base coat of the Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint in the color Nautical. And that's because when I use these brand new Terra Clay paints, I'm not going to be able to distress back to the wood, which I don't want to see. If I do distress, I'll see the base coat of Nautical. So what I did was I sketched out this underwater scene here, and I just printed it out I tiled it on my computer, printed it out to the size that I want it, and I'm going to trace it onto my substrate. This is the front of a sewing cabinet that I do want to put it on. So here we go, I've decided to go for it, and I've got my piece on these paint pyramids here just to raise it so that I can paint around the edges. And what I'm using here is Dixie Belle's Foam and Dandy brush. Be sure you give your paint a stir, that's better. The great thing about all-in-one silk mineral paint is that it has both a primer and a top coat. This will be my first time doing anything of an artistic I nature. I think that since I'm using the Terra Clay paint on top of this, if I absolutely don't like it, I can probably reactivate it and just like take it right back to this layer. Silk mineral paint is self-leveling. Unlike Terra Paint, which I'll be painting with later, with Terra Paint you can get some really awesome texture. Now, because I'm just using this as a base for Terra, I don't know that I'm going to need to do two coats. It's been two hours since I applied the silk, and what I'm going to do now is brush in the background in my Terra Clay paints. So I'm going to be using Blue Moon, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to both darken it and lighten it to have some variation. So let's start with the darker colors first. I'm going to open up the Blue Moon and what I'm working on here is um, a piece of glass. I'm going to use that as my palette. So I'm just going to take some of that paint. I'm just going to put it right on here. Then I'm going to take a touch of onyx. Just going to dip in here and put that right on. Okay, so I've got both those colors on the glass. I'm just going to mix in a little bit of water with that. And then I'm just going to go ahead and mix them right on the glass. I just missed a little bit more and I'm going to brush on. And since I've got the blue silk underneath, it really doesn't matter if that shows through a little bit. I'm going to grab a little bit more of the Blue Moon. Once again, I'm just going to mix it right on the glass here. And I still have some of the onyx on there, but not as much as before. So it's just going to be just a little bit lighter. Don't forget the knob here. And I just want to blend all those colors together. Okay, so I'm going to go in with a little bit more of this. This is my Blue Moon. And just a touch more of the onyx here. Once again, I'm going to add water and I'm just mixing it right on the glass. And this is going to be the water, so you don't have to get this on in any kind of smooth fashion. You can have a little bit of movement with this. Make sure I've got my sides covered here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Blue Moon once again onto the glass. I'm just going to wipe this off. Now I'm going to open up Moonbeam and I'll add that onto the glass here. Spray it down and then I'm going to mix these two colors together going to have a bit of lighter color coming off the corner here and then I'm just going to continue mixing in some of this darker color here grab a little bit more <clears throat> of the blue moon Now, 
Just keep going in until you get the coloration that you want. And I would suggest like keeping at least two brushes around. A second brush will be handy for helping to blend out the colors so that they meld together. A little bit of water will help with this step, but don't add too much. I'm going to stop at this and let it dry. I think I'll let it go for about two hours. I'm going to replace my lids so that my paint doesn't dry up. Just want to show you how easy it is to wipe your paint right off your glass palette here. Just washes right off with a bit of water. And then you're ready to go with your next painting. So what I'm going to do is wash out my brushes and let this dry and we'll be back to trace on our pattern. My background is now dry so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some of this Serral transfer paper and this is a wax-free product. When I trace my artwork onto the surface and I paint, it's not going to um, repel the paint at all because it's wax-free. I'll just position this right underneath, make sure I've got my artwork right where I want it. And I'm just going to take a pencil and I'm just going to trace right around. Now before I get too far with this, I'm just going to check and I've got my drawing right there. So I'm just gonna continue this off camera and once I'm done, we'll be ready to start with our paint. I'm gonna start with my white paint and this color is called Moonbeam. I'm not going for solid color here because I want the fins to be transparent. So I'm only brushing it on initially very sporadically. I'm just going over it with some water just to thin the consistency. And I do want some of this blue to peek through, so I want to make it look like it's transparent. And wherever I want that blue to peek through, I'm just going to go at it with some water. Just a little bit of water on the brush will help you wet distress back to the layer underneath. And you can see that's coming right through. I just want it wispy. So I'm going to stop right there with that one. Then I'm going to come up here and go ahead and outline this. And again, I'm going to come in with some water and just thin it right out. And I do want quite a lot of this blue peeking through. So you want some of that blue peeking through and you want it to look somewhat transparent. So just play with it. So I'm just going in with my last one here and I think what would be best is if I have this on my um, Lazy Susan so that I can turn it. So I'm just gonna briefly move this off camera. I'm gonna bring in the Lazy Susan. I'm gonna put this back on and now I can turn it right around. So there, now that it's on the Lazy Susan, I can adjust as I wish. Now if there's something you don't like, you can always let it dry and you can always wet distress back to, um, you know, where you want it to be. So don't think that you have to get this all in one go because you can go back multiple times to get exactly what you want. So I'm just going to turn this around and I'm going to fill in some of these white spots here. And you know, the beauty of doing something so organic like a koi fish here is that you really can't go wrong you know like if i'm painting outside of the lines who's gonna know these spots are so individual it's like a fingerprint now the water will just help you move it around so don't be afraid to layer it up and use water to help you move it around. Now I forgot to mention that what I've done here is I've marked little W's where I want my white so I know where I'm going to be painting white. And like I said, this Sorel tracing paper will not impact the paint. So it's not going to repel it. You can just go right over it. Now the brush I'm using here is from um, Dixie Bell. They've got an amazing collection of artist brushes here. So I've got an angle, I've got a flat, I've got a wider one that I was using previously, and this is, it's called a round. So I'm just following my lines, and this is very much like paint by numbers. So once again, I'm going to move around using my Lazy Susan. If you make a little boo-boo, 
can just erase it with a little bit of water. And there you go. This is just like coloring when you were a kid, although I always did like to color outside of the lines. In okay. some areas, I'm just gonna dot the paint and let it trail off. My next color is marigold, and I'm not sure which brush I'm gonna use for this. I might just try this angle brush. I think I'm liking this angle brush. I like that the tip of the angle brush allows me to get into tight spaces, while the width of the brush allows me to get into the broader areas where I have more expanse. All the colors I'm going to be painting, with the exception of the fins, are going to need a couple of coats. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer on a few different colors so that I can get a little bit of depth, as you'll see later. I'm just going right around all the white I did. So it's just a matter of filling in right around the white. And that's going to be pretty easy. Now, if you prefer, you can go back to this round brush here. And this is just really good for getting all around these curves and all these edges. I find it easier to go in and pull back. And that's why this Lazy Susan is just so ideal because I can go at it from any angle. So I'm just loving how this is working out. So this is just very much like doing a paint by number. It's just very easy. You just follow your lines and go around what you previously painted. And like I said, this is organic. So even if you go over your lines, I just don't think there's really any going wrong with this. Standing in the cold, cold rain I don't even feel the pain Anything to step away I know we could both do better Okay, so that seems to be pretty good. I'm just gonna take a little bit of orange and dab it in here. I'm also gonna dab a little bit of orange right in here. And I'll just put a little bit of that in here too. Next color is Prairie Dawn and it's this really luminous sort of yellow, very light yellow, pale. Now I don't know if I'm going to leave these water lilies in a light color or if I'm going to change the color, but either way, this Prairie Dawn is going to be a great base for whatever I decide to put on it. And what I'm doing here is I'm just leaving like a line in between so I can see the shape of my petals. I'm not quite going right to the line. Just leaving a little bit there so I can see where those petals are. Here's a closer look so that you can see how I'm leaving the gap. It's just a very, very fine line, hardly, barely there. And that just allows me to see the edges. And that'll be helpful for next steps if I decide to go in with another color to accentuate these petals. Now what I'm doing is I'm adding an overlapping petal. I'm just going to fill in right around it. And then I'm going to continue on with the next one. Wish you would have left me here. Now I'm just controlled by fear. What's the point in our reflection if you never look in the mirror? Counting the days until you're gone. Waiting for us to carry on. Oh, I'm running. What am I running from? Time's going by, but where's the time go when? I tried to give you everything You took it all and took it for granted If you're still falling out of love Maybe it's cause it's not enough Okay, one down one more to go over here. For the first layer of green, I'm gonna be using pistachio with just a touch of the onyx. And I'm gonna scrape 
some of this off and then I'm just going to use a touch of the onyx here. I don't know how much I'm going to need so I'm just going to stir with a tiny bit. Okay, I'm liking that color. So let's just go in and paint it. I'm just going to go in and paint this loosely. Okay, so now I'm going to refine it with one of these brushes. This is my round. And I'm just going to be careful about painting around these leaves here. If you find your paint is getting dry, just go in with some water and reactivate it. And I'm talking about on the palette here. I don't necessarily want to get the paint wet where I'm painting because I want some good coverage here. Just want to make sure I've got the edges here. And that's good enough for the first coat. So I'm going to move on to the other water lilies. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to mix a touch of black in. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do the shading. The paint has been drying now for an hour and I'm going to come in and add just a touch of onyx in a few places. So I'm just going to come in here. For the black spots on the body of the koi, I'm doing more of a stippling motion. I don't want the edges to be smooth because I do want there to be a little bit of delineation of texture between the white and dark spots. Now I'm going in and I'm adding shading to the lily pads. And if you find that um, the onyx is a little bit dark at this point, wait for it to dry and then see how it is. In the end, I did decide to take a little bit of water and distress back to the shade of green underneath. Now that I have some black on these um, lily pads, I'm going to come in, I think, with a little bit of pistachio, just straight, and I think I'm just going to water it down quite a bit. I want it a little bit translucent. Now, I did not film this, but I also added the same pistachio wash over the black at the very end because I did feel it was a little bit dark, especially along the edges. So I don't know if you'll notice it, but to my eye, it does look much softer. Now I'm going to switch over to Moonbeam and I'm just going to put some white highlights on it. I did also borrow a few paintbrushes from my husband's stash that he uses to um, do touch-ups on furniture. I remember when you said you're afraid of what's ahead, what I've been right or die. The best thing about this part is that you don't need a steady hand. You want it to look wavy and imperfect. So I'm finding this number six round to be a really great brush to outline around the lily pads here. Now I'm switching over to a much finer brush, and this particular one is a number two round. Just allows me to get these star-shaped highlights, and as you can see, I'm just flicking the brush right out from the center. I've just got a fine liner brush here, and I'm just going in and swiping on some highlights. I'm also using the moonbeam here to section off areas of the lily pads. I asked and you just start crying. How are you acting so surprised? Haven't you seen it in my eyes? Oh, I'm running. What am I running from? Time's going by, but where's the time going? I tried to give you everything. 
On this last water lily, I found in the end that I didn't have enough shading on this one, so I did come back after sleeping on it to fix that. And that's the real beauty of Terra Clay Paint, is that you can come back even six months from now, as long as you don't seal it, you can play with it to your heart's content until you have it just the way you want it. I do like the pale water lilies, but I feel like they could have a little bit more depth, so I'm just mixing some moonbeam and bougainvillea and I'm just gonna just go in and do the tips. Along with painting the tips I'm gonna go right around the edges also leaving the center the original color. I'm now using some daffodil. I think what I'm gonna do is mix it with a little bit of white and mixing in just a touch of this prairie dawn should help that quite a bit. Let's see how this is. Use upward strokes to paint in the stamens, but be sure not to paint too solidly because you do want the undercoat to show through. That looks pretty good. Now we'll come over to the other one here. And again, I'm really sorry if this is off camera. I don't have a monitor, so I have no way of knowing. I just need some brighter and darker colors in here just to give it a little bit of depth. So I think that'll be the last thing. I've mixed bougainvillea with some uh, marigold. And I'm just going to add a little in. I'm just stippling the color on. I'm just gonna take a little bit of water and stipple it in. I still want the orange to show through. I just want a little bit of modeling. Continue to add just a tiny bit of water so that you can blend the two colors together and get the perfect shading. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to call that done. I'm going to let that dry overnight and then I'm going to clear coat it with a matte finish. I don't have the Terra Seal Matte, unfortunately, but I think the matte from the regular line is going to be just fine. After sleeping on it, I did come back and I touched up the eyes and softened some of the black on the lily pads. We sprayed the table with silk all-in-one mineral paint and this is what we end up with. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning how to paint a pond scene on furniture. For more paint ideas, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring that bell to get notifications of our upcoming projects. If you're interested in some of the products we used, I'll leave links in the description. Join us again soon for another flip on the fly.